Well, we had a great trip to Cayo Costa yesterday, and we had a little boo-boo in the evening. We ended up uh, getting an alarm on the Garmin, thanks to the um, NMEA 2000 network we put in, that tells you everything that's going on with the engine. And it said we had a low water flow alarm, followed by overheating, which led me to believe that we picked up something in the C-pump um, maybe a shell or sand or something or we had a failure of the water pump impeller also before uh, we, when we come back from a trip I always check everything over and then I put I check the bottom of the the skeg here and I always paint it so I can see if we ran into something that took water oh god I can't speak that took uh, some of the paint off, like we might have run aground a little bit or hit some sand. We were at a beach, so I mean, that's entirely possible. Um, the props look good. So uh, I'm going to go into the engine here and pull the water pump impeller off and see uh, if that's what the issue was. Hopefully it was. Um, and if that's the case, I want to get a spare to keep on board, which I probably should anyway, because I learn every day how to fix something on the boat. But that little mistake cost us $1,200 to get towed back because we did not have a sea tow membership. We do now. So anyway, let's check out the water pump and see if that's the problem. I usually end up pulling the pin on the hatch so it opens all the way because it's easier to get to because I have to get all the way down there. My wife pointed out that I had trouble working on the engine because I did not have on my New Balance 608s. I had never done this repair before, so after figuring out that the idler pulley was not the one to remove, I found the tensioning pulley and took the tension off the serpentine belt so that could be removed. The easiest way to slide the belt off is off of the pulley that's on the recirculating pump. It doesn't have any ridges on it. It's also the easiest way to put it back on. Disconnect the bracket that connects the power steering pump to the tension pulley. One, two, three, four, and then I have to loosen this fitting. It's probably easier to take it off up here, and then everything will pull out. Okay, I have to be honest. I don't have a manual and I thought that this was the water pump where the impeller is. It's a recirculation pump, but I needed to remove it anyway to make it easier to get to. Here I'm removing the hose clamp that holds that hose onto the top of the recirculation pump. To give you an idea of how difficult it is to work on this engine on my boat, I have to lie on top of the engine on a piece of foam and hang upside down to get to everything. There's also a low point drain here. Let's see what this looks like. Shit. Bolts fell out. <laughs> Let's take this inside. It's too difficult out here. Pug Winston enjoys all aspects of boat repair. Okay, 
Okay, and then the two flat ends are here. It turned out that the thing that I could not reach was where I needed to be. That was the water pump on the bottom left. You can see that I'm already bleeding and I was trying unsuccessfully to get the 10 millimeter bolts off the water pump housing. The easiest way is just to remove the whole thing and then do it on a desktop or bench top. Once I removed the idler pulley and the frame that holds it, everything was easy to get to. Once I finally had the water pump assembly off, it was just a matter of removing the six 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on the back. I think the easiest way to remove all these is with a small socket set. I just had a large one which is kind of clumsy, but they all came out. The two blue drains on the bottom are low point drains that you can use if you're winterizing your system or draining it. There are three longer bolts that also hold on a bracket that the water pump hangs on. Make sure you put those back in the same place. Once you get the housing apart, you'll see that there is a rubber impeller and then a wear plate on the top and the bottom. When you get a rebuild kit, it comes with the wear plate and also when you just get the impeller kit, you get the impeller and the little O-ring type thing gasket that looks like Mickey Mouse ears. I couldn't move the old impeller at all. I guess it had overheated, so I tried a variety of tools to get it out and finally was able to. I finally was able to get the old impeller out and it looked intact but it was certainly locked up inside of the housing and wouldn't turn. The housing looked pretty good, but I was going to pull the old gasket out, and I also washed everything with phosphoric acid, that same stuff that I used in a barnacle removal video, and it got it nice and clean. This is the new impeller that I installed. I always use Quicksilver OEM parts whenever I can. This is the new impeller already installed. It kind of requires two hands. And the best way I've found to do it is to put Dawn detergent on it and just kind of twist it into place. The other half of the housing holds the wear plate. And if you'll notice, the wear plate has a larger tab on one side and a smaller tab on the other. And they get aligned when it fits into the housing and all goes back together. And they align with these pieces. That, the tabs here and there. And with the new washer or the new o-ring that comes then you just put this on top of it like so. And put all the little 10 millimeter screws back in. The pump's all been redone, and I put it in a tank of phosphoric acid, get it nice and clean, and get all the corrosion out. Since I took the serpentine belt off, I checked it for any wear or cracks. This one looks good, and it only has about 20 hours, or 120 hours on it. 
there is a mercury part number on here and while I had the the belt I ordered a spare to keep in my spares kit on board because if this breaks you're dead in the water now the fun part putting everything back together you'll see that there's a larger and a smaller diameter hose and fitting that corresponds to it and while it seems like the easier way to put it on is to just hang the water pump on the bolt and then connect the hoses it's actually easier to connect the hoses first and then install the water pump you do have to kind of twist it to get it on and the mistake I made first was tightening up the hoses what you need to do actually is leave them a little bit loose so when they get into place they're oriented correctly and then you can tighten them up here's a good example of what I'm talking about when you tighten the clamps all the way up and then twist the water pump to install it it kinked the hose and restricted the water flow so I was able to loosen it and then realign it and retighten it while I was hanging upside down in the bilge I figured it would be a good time to check the bilge pump and the float switch you can see here when I twist the water pump to put it in place that's where it's kinking the hose so I went back and fixed it Now it's time to put the seawater block recirculation pump back on. I dumped it in some phosphoric acid to clean everything out and I think I got some of the rust and salt corrosion out. Now I need to tighten all this back up. Next it was time to put the tensioning pulley and the bracket back on. It was a little bit of a puzzle, but I was able to get it back into place without removing anything else. The brackets seemed to bind just a little bit with that low point fitting drain, so I loosened the hose clamps and moved it a few degrees over and it got it out of the way. All of the low point drain and flush areas on the Mercruiser 350 MPI are color coded in blue. Once that's tightened up, now it's time to reinstall that seawater block recirculation pump that I thought was the water pump. It takes a little bit of finesse to get it into place, and initially I had connected the top hose, but it's easier if you connect that last. Also, it has kind of a flexible pivoting fitting, so once you get it into place, you can rotate it around and connect it to the water neck. A lot easier that way. As you can see, I have to wiggle my svelte tiny frame on top of the engine, lying on a piece of foam. Pretty uncomfortable. That's actually what makes the job difficult. The bolting and unbolting is not difficult. 
Then there's one more bracket that connects the power steering pump. And then it's time to put the serpentine belt back on. Then it's time to snug everything up. And apparently some demented engineer at Mercury thought it would be funny to use different size bolts. The serpentine belt routing is stamped right on the water neck. It's actually really easy to get everything around all the pulleys um, since it's not under any tension like when you're working on a car. Also, um, remember once you get everything in place and the tensioner pulley is loosened, if you slide the belt off of that center pulley that does not have the grooves, it's much easier to get everything routed and then slide that back over the top of it. You'll see what I mean here in just a second when I loosen the pulley. The tensioner pulley has a clever gear design. You loosen the center nut and then there's a bolt that you can put a wrench or in my case a crescent wrench. The only time you'll ever see me using a crescent wrench to um, move that thing along. Then you slide the belt off that center pulley and it gives you some room to put everything else around. And then you don't have to get it up over the lip of the pulley. You can just slide it right back over like that and then tighten up the pulley that tensions everything with the crescent wrench. When you rotate it clockwise, it lifts it up and then you just cinch up that inner nut. It really makes it convenient. When I initially tightened up the serpentine belt, I think it was just a little bit too tight, so I ended up backing it off just a little bit. It doesn't need to be super tight. You don't need it to fly off, but I think it was on a little bit too tight, and I didn't want to prematurely wear that belt out. There was one last bolt that I forgot to snug up, but I'm doing that now, and then we're close to being done. Like I said, I went to loosen it just a little bit to take some of the tension off, but that was it. Incidentally, I asked my local marina what they would charge to do this job, and they said $1,000. Learning to work on your own boat is invaluable.